Okay, so we're gonna start on our backs, either in Shavasana, good morning, Gina, or in Baddha Konasana, bottoms of the feet together, knees apart. So just find a comfortable position for yourself. Close the eyes. And together, let's take a big inhale through the nose and just fill up with breath. And then open your mouth and sigh it out and let everything go. And then do that again, long, slow inhale through the nose, fill up, keep filling. And then open your mouth and let that go. And then just keep your awareness on your breath. Keep the breath slow and fluid. And we're gonna end our class focusing on gratitude, but I'm gonna start our class with this quote that I saw on LinkedIn of all places. It was posted by Ariana Huffington this week. And it says, when you stop chasing the wrong things, you give the right things a chance to catch you. When you stop chasing the wrong things, you give the right things a chance to catch you. I like that one. So on that note of gratitude and stopping for looking for things that we don't have, take a moment and just acknowledge the things in your life that you are grateful for. Could be something super simple, like your breath. or something more complicated, like your family, huh? And let's take two more deep breaths here. Keep filling your mind with things you're grateful for. And then together, Take a big inhale through your nose. Keep filling up slowly. So sip it like you're sipping through a straw through your nose. And that breath is coming in. As the breath comes in, your belly is rising and expanding. And when you can't breathe in anymore, open your mouth and just say the word ha and let that air come out the mouth. Keep exhaling till your lungs are completely empty. And then just come back to the natural rhythm of your breath. Open the eyes and take a moment to bring your knees into your chest. One hand on each knee. I'm gonna have you take your knees out wide, more by your rib cage. And then from there, squeeze the knees toward the chest. The hips are gonna lift. You can rotate those ankles around. We're gonna be doing lots of balancing. So go ahead and get those little cracks out. And then bring your thighs together and we're gonna stir your knees around like a big pot. Just go in one direction a few times, nice and slow. And then we're gonna go the opposite direction. And then let both of your knees fall over to the right. We're gonna extend your left arm and look over your left shoulder. Your right hand can gently press down on that left knee if you want a deeper twist. One more breath here. And then switch everything up. Your knees go left, you extend your right arm and look at the right arm, left hand can gently press on that right knee. Or it can just stay out extended on the floor. One more breath here. Keep off the mat. Knees are at 45 degree angles with your legs, okay? Air pause just is connected. Hopefully you guys can hear me. We're gonna take your head off the floor, elbows nice and wide. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, you're gonna bring your right elbow to your left knee and extend your right leg. Inhale back to center. And then as you exhale, we're gonna take it the other way. And then continue that on your own. Gina, I'm glad you're um, 
camera's on because now I know you guys can hear me because I see you doing what I'm doing. So thank you. So a few more just like this. You're exhaling as you twist, inhaling in the center. We're gonna change this up in just a moment. So next time your right elbow goes to the left knee, we're gonna do two little pulses. So you're gonna do one pulse and then straighten your right arm and reach and then come back to center and take it the other way. And then you're gonna reach and then you can extend the leg this time if you want. So the right leg extends, right elbow to the knee and then right arm reaches and then bring it back to center and inhale. As you exhale, extend the left leg, bring the left elbow to the right knee and, and then extend the arm outside that right knee. Inhale back to center, exhale and exhale again. Good, couple more just like that. Let's do one more, just like this on each side. Take a break whenever you need it. And then come on back to center. We're gonna lift your leg up to the sky. We're gonna lace your fingers together like Charlie's Angel. So your pointer fingers are reaching up towards your toes. I want you to lift your shoulders off the mat. So this is our starting point. Your core should feel engaged and then reach your toes up to the sky. And then from here, we exhale and lift, seven, six, five, four, exhaling as you lift, three, two, and then hold it at the top little pulses, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release it, draw those knees in, and then release your feet to the floor, press down on your feet, lift your hips, reach your arms up overhead, as you exhale, bring everything down, your spine, your arms, your hips. As you exhale, everything's on the floor. And then as you inhale, lift up, press into the feet, reach the arms. And as you exhale, everything comes back down. Let's do that two more times, should feel good. You can walk your feet closer to your body if you have a little more space. One more time. And then we're gonna draw the knees into your chest, get a little movement going here, rocking forward and then round the spine and rock back down. We're gonna meet in a standing forward fold. You can try it without your hands. If you're feeling a little daring today, otherwise use your hands and we'll meet in a standing forward fold at the top of your mat. So your feet should be about hip width distance apart, toes facing the front of your mat. Your knees can be as bent as you need them to be this morning. Be nice to your hamstrings. We have not warmed up the hamstrings at all yet. So shake your head out, yes and no. And then place your hands on your shins. Inhale, look forward, Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, fold. Do that again. Inhale, press away. Exhale and fold. Take your arms out like wings, inhale, rise to standing, reach your arms up, look up, and draw your hands to your heart center. From here, inhale, reach up for Surya Namaskar A. As you exhale, fold forward, sun salutation A. From here, inhale, look forward. As you exhale, plant your hands, step back to plank and pause. So your feet, walk them way, way back. And then from there, send the heels to the back of your mat. So if you can see me on the screen, if I were doing it the opposite way, my heels would be com coming forward. Send the heels back. Fingers are spread. Look at your wrists. They should face the front of your mat. And then I want you to press both hands equally into the floor. When you do that, you should feel your core engage and the weight come off your wrists a little bit. Take one more breath and then just send your hips up and back, downward facing dog. For those of you using my playlist, I just ended that first song because it's really long. So if you want to do the same thing, <clears throat> we're going to come forward again to plank. Hold it here. And then slowly lower all the way down Chaturanga. From here, we're going to untuck the toes. You're going to draw your elbows back. 
Your hip bones stay down. Inhale, lift your heart for cobra. And exhale, lower down. Do that two more times. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, lower. I'm gonna do that one more time. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, lower, tuck your toes, press up to plank, pause. And then downward facing dog. So I told you guys this playlist I made for Jen and this song I swear was written for her. Way back then, Jen, Natalie Merchant knew this song was about you. Take two more breaths here. And at the end of your exhale, look forward. You're gonna walk your feet to the top of your mat. When you get there, inhale, look forward, and then exhale, fold. Take your arms out like wings, wings find a nice flat spine and rise on up, reach up, look up. Exhale, hands come to your heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, you're gonna swan dive forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, look forward. As you exhale, plant your hands, step back, lower with your exhalation, chaturanga. Inhale to cobra or upward facing dog. Only difference is your thighs aren't touching the floor in your up dog. Elbows still draw back, heart lifts up. One more breath and make your way to down dog. If you wanna add in chaturanga pushups, go for it. I'm not gonna cue that, but you can always do that. Take a couple of nice deep breaths here. Using that Ujjaya Pranayama breath, which is like fogging a mirror with your throat, but your lips stay closed. That's the only difference. At the end of your exhale, look forward, travel to the top of your mat. When you get there, inhale, look forward, and then exhale, fold. Inhale, rise to standing, reach up, look up, reach those arms up to the sky. We're gonna take a side body stretch, right hand down, left arm goes up and then over your ear. If you want, you can take that hand behind the back so it would look a little something like that. <clears throat> Inhale, both arms reach up, look up. Take it the other way. Inhale, both arms reach up. Lace your fingers behind your back. Let your hands slide down your booty as you gaze up. So get this nice back, sandy back bend here. Open that heart and then lead with your heart. You're gonna hinge and fold over your thighs. So maybe your legs are straight now. Maybe they're a little straighter, but your knees are still bent. Doesn't matter. Shake your head out, yes and no. So from here, I'm gonna have you bend your right knee and peel your left shoulder open. So you should start to feel a nice stretch all on the IT band. Reach those arms away from you toward the right. And then we'll switch that up. Bend your left knee, draw the right hip back and the right shoulder. Couple more breaths. And then straighten your legs and In chair, your toes are lifted. Your tailbone's gonna tuck under, weights back in the heels. We're gonna take a twist here, right arm back, left arm forward. You can look back at your right hand if you want. And then inhale back to center. And as you exhale, take a twist the other way, left arm back, right arm forward. Inhale back to center, straighten your legs and just fold. We're gonna stay right here. I'm gonna have you take a big step back with your left foot, find a runner's lunge. So slide the ball of the foot way, way back and keep this knee lifted so you can enjoy a nice stretch on the front of your left thigh. As far as your right knee, it should be right over the ankle. We're gonna drop your right knee to the mat. If you need more cushioning for your knee, you're gonna fold your yoga mat just like that and give yourself double the amount of cushioning. Your toes are gonna stay tucked as you walk your hands up on the front thigh. You're gonna draw these lower ribs in, bring that spine up nice and tall, relax your shoulders, and then melt your hips forward. So you're pressing into the ball of your left foot 
and then you're gonna press away from yourself to keep a nice long spine. If you want, you can reach your arms up. So we're gonna bring your left hand down either to your hip, to the floor, or you can grab your block and place your hand on the block and take a side body stretch. So that right arm is up and over your ear. And then take it the other way. This, this side's a little harder to reach the floor, so you might wanna grab your block if you didn't use it. You're still pressing into the ball of your left foot, bringing those hips forward. And then on your next inhale, both arms reach up. Bring your hands to the floor. You're gonna lift your left knee off the mat and take a twist, left hand down, right arm up to the sky. Think about drawing your belly button in. Release your right hand down. You're gonna step your left foot forward and then inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold and step back with that right foot. Drop the knee. Walk your hands up on that thigh. Relax your shoulders and let your hips come forward. Ribs stay tucked in. Press away from yourself. Relax those shoulders down your back. If you wanna reach up, you can reach those arms up to the sky. That right hand's gonna come down. Your block should be waiting for you there from the last time. Left arm up and over the ear. And then come on up, take it to the other side. You can also just have your hand on your hip if you don't have blocks and you need a block. On your next inhale, you're gonna come back to center with those arms, big inhale. And then hands come down, lift your right knee, take that twist. Left arm up to the sky. Bring your left hand down. This time you're gonna step your left foot back to plank. Take a vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing dog. So you guys have an open path to skip your vinyasas anytime. Child's pose is available anytime you need it. On your next inhale, we're gonna reach your right leg up and back, flex those toes down to the floor, and then you're gonna drive that knee forward and plant your right foot at the top of your mat. So we're back in that runner's lunge. We're gonna drop your left knee just like we did before. Inhale, come on up, crescent B. As you exhale, you're gonna lift the knee, sweep your arms back, find your balance. Do that again, inhale, drop the knee, reach up and back. Exhale, sweep those arms back. Stay here this time with that knee lifted and just come on up crescent A. So sink into that knee, spine is tall, shoulders relax. We're gonna take a twist just like we did in the chair, your right arm back, left arm forward. I want you to reach back. Imagine like, let's use the example of shaking someone's hand behind you. My goodness, when was the last time you shook someone's hand? Look forward, right hand to your back thigh. We call this exalted warrior. Reach your left arm up and back. So you should feel a nice side body stretch. You can also drop your knee here and take it like this. Then we're gonna reach your right arm up to meet your left. If your knee is down, go ahead and lift it up. We're gonna lift into warrior three. So maybe reach forward, maybe hands at your heart, or maybe hands on your blocks to find a supported warrior three. So do what works for you. But our legs, all of our legs should be the same. Right toes are forward. Left leg, look back at it. Your toes should be flexed actively down to the floor. Hips are parallel to the floor. Take a couple more breaths here. And then I'm gonna have you put a bend in your right knee and we're gonna come to standing, bringing that left leg up left ankle on your right thigh. So it's gonna be like a figure four, should look a little something like this. Hands at your heart, keep your left foot flexed. You're gonna have a seat. So it's like a one-legged chair in this figure four shape. So this is getting into your hips. So you, those of you that asked for hip openers, you're gonna get a few, a few more I should say. So if you need support here, just put your hands on your box. 
you're still getting your hip opener. The balance is just for fun. So where we, we are gonna go next is into half moon pose. So you can bring your right hand on the block right here, bring your left hand to your hip, and then we're gonna open into half moon. So you're gonna flex your left toes straight back, left arm up to the sky. You're trying to peel this hip open. So maybe you don't wanna reach your arm up, that's fine. Stay here. If you are lifting your arm up, can you lift your gaze up toward the sky? Two more breaths right here. And then we're gonna take a big step back into warrior two. So bend your right knee, big step back using almost the whole length of your yoga mat. And then we sink into this right knee. So your right heel, check your alignment, heels in line with your left foot. You're sinking into your knee, but your knee is not going past your ankle. If it is, please slide your foot more forward and then take your arms parallel. So you're reaching through both arms. Your right knee is pressing toward the outer edge of your right pinky toe. And just keep breathing here. Inhale, reverse your warrior, reach up and back. And then find side angle pose. Bring that forearm to your thigh, left arm up to the sky. And I want you to take this forearm and kind of nudge your knee open, but still keep your foot rooted. So I don't want you to roll to the outer edge of your foot, but your energy is going that way. Maybe arm over the ear. On your next inhale, reverse your warrior again. Don't change the legs, just the arms. And then come back, another side angle pose. Maybe this time you grab your block and you go a little deeper. Maybe your hand goes to the floor. Let's try a half wrap here. So try to peel that left shoulder open. When your hand comes behind your back, you try to get your fingers on the inside of that right hip crease. If you wanna do the full bind here, you're welcome to. We're gonna come back again for that full wrap with an option to go into um, Bird of Paradise. Two more breaths right here. And if you're like, what the heck is that? Don't worry about it, you don't have to do it. We're gonna unwrap on your next inhale, reach your left arm up to the sky. Don't change your legs. This one's for you, Haley. Come on back to warrior two and just stay here and breathe. Two more breaths. Your right thigh should feel like it's simmering in some hot boiling water. One more breath. And then come on up. So if you wanna shorten your stance, bump your left foot up a little bit. We're gonna reach forward, right hand down, left arm up to the sky. And we're leaning back. I want you to think like a half moon pose with two feet on the ground, but your hips are still aligned. Your shoulders are still in line. If your shoulders weigh in front, like I'm demonstrating right now, all that means is you need to bump your hand up more on that right chin. Maybe arm over the ear. If you need a side body stretch, if your shoulders are tight, go ahead and take that hand behind your back. We're gonna come back to warrior two. So we're gonna walk your hands to the back of your mat for a pose called Skandasana, it's for your inner thighs. So put your hands on the floor. You're going to lift your right toes up and kind of sink into that left knee and left hip. So if you've got knee issues, support yourself with your hands. If your knees are pretty okay, you can lower yourself a little deeper. Of course, if your inner thighs are okay for that too. We're gonna take it now to the front, do the same thing. Just walk your hands over into Skandasana on the other leg, lift those left toes up. We're gonna do that one more time on each side. Walk to the back of your mat, lift your right toes. and then switch it up. From here, we're gonna come into a runner's lunge. So just walk your hands around, right toes face the front of your mat. We're gonna keep your right foot where it is and send your left leg up, standing split, reach up just for a moment. We're gonna end up bringing your left foot down next to your right. 
Inhale, look forward. Exhale and just fold. Setting up for chair pose. So bring your big toes to touch. So I was trained where you take a fist and you put it between your heels. So if you wanna try that, that's about how much space you want between your heels. Big toes stay together. From there, you sit down, lift all 10 toes up and reach those arms up. We're gonna bring your hands to your heart and take a prayer twist to the right, pressing your right palm into your left. Then I want you to look down, look at your knees. If your left knee is in front of your right, please nudge your left hip back. Keep your knees in line with each other. We're gonna shift the weight into your right foot. Take that left foot and step it back and you're gonna be in a prayer twist. Now you can do this with your knee down or you could do it with the knee up. Doesn't matter to me, but I want you to focus on that twist. Suck your belly button in, crown of the head goes forward as your left hip goes back. And we're gonna stay here for a few breaths. So I want you to practice focusing just on your breath. I know this is a hard pose to hold for a bit. Just challenge yourself to practice your yoga. Staying calm in uncomfortable situations. That's what yoga is, right? It's not about going into a pretzel, which we practically are right now. Two more breaths. Can you reach your head forward a little longer and your left heel back a little more? One more breath. All you're gonna do is bring your hands to the floor. From here, press into both hands, send your right leg up, it's gonna feel good, shake it out. Maybe bend your knee, stack your hip, or maybe flip your dog, sending those hips up to the sky. We're gonna meet in down dog. If you wanna take a vinyasa, you can come right through that vinyasa. This is a good time for child's pose if you want a child's pose or a down dog, you choose. For me, I'm getting hot. <laughs> take a couple more breaths here. Let's take a letting go breath together, big inhale through the nose, fill up with breath. Open mouth, sigh, let something go. Reach your left leg up behind you, take a big inhale. As you exhale, bring that knee forward, plant your foot at the top of your mat. So find your runner's lunge first. We're gonna drop your right knee. Inhale into crescent B, arms up and back. As you exhale, lift the knee, sweep your arms back behind you. Do that again, drop the knee, inhale, find your back bend. Exhale, sweep those arms back, keep that knee lifted and inhale, find crescent B. Shoulders relaxed. Settle into your crescent B. We're gonna take that twist. Left arm back, right arm forward. So you're upright. We're not leaning forward. We're not pulling way back. We're neutral with the spine, but those arms are nice and open. And then exalt your warrior. Left hand to your back thigh, right arm reaches up. Always an option to drop your knee. So bring your gaze forward, bring the left arm up next to the right. And if your knee is down, go ahead and lift it. Find your warrior three. So maybe you wanna reach forward, slowly lift up. Remember, you can use your blocks here. If you need to check your alignment, put your hand on your back. It should be nice and flat, like you could put a hot cup of coffee right on your back and it wouldn't go anywhere. I don't recommend doing that, but it's just a, a visual for you. We're gonna to come to standing on your left foot. So ground in the left foot, lift the right knee. Give it a lift and then right ankle on your left thigh. Flex your right toes first, focus your eyes and then have a seat. And just stay here and breathe. Again, hands can come down on your blocks. Don't be afraid to use your blocks. They're like friends that you can lean on. Two more breaths, and the next is half moon pose. So left hand to your block, right hand to your hip, and then send that right leg back. Flex your toes, open the chest. Maybe you lift the arm, maybe you lift the gaze. It might be a different experience on this side, so just go with it.
One more breath. Bend your left knee, big step back into warrior two. Arms parallel, left heel, look at your alignment, left heel in line with your right foot. It's different than a warrior one. And then we're sinking in the knee, which we aren't doing any warrior ones today. Sorry to disappoint you. Stay here, only warrior twos and threes today. Equal weight in both legs. So find the outer edge of your right foot. Keep your legs exactly as they are. Reach up and back to the back of your mat, reverse your warrior. And then find side angle pose. I always recommend starting with the forearm to your thigh, but of course go wherever you like. But we're nudging that left knee open as your left foot stays grounded in the mat. Do what you like with that top arm. So I want you to sink deeper in your left knee and keep that as you inhale, reverse your warrior again. And then side angle pose, maybe hand on your block, fingertips to the floor, half wrap if you're ready for it, full wrap if you're ready for it. But keep rolling the shoulder open. You don't wanna take a half wrap if you end up looking like I am right now where your shoulder's collapsing. You want the shoulder to open. If you're wrapped, go ahead and reach that arm back up to the sky. We're gonna to come to warrior two and stay here and simmer in it. Four breaths, slow breaths, three more breaths. Soften your jaw, two more breaths. Loosen the toes of your left foot, maybe lift them up and fan them back out. One more breath. Straighten that left leg, reverse the triangle, two straight legs. Do whatever you like with your arm, your top arm or the bottom. You can also float and get into your core a little bit. And then come on back to warrior two. We're gonna find that skandhasana going to the back of your mat. Hands can be on the floor. You can keep your hands at your heart if that's right for you. You can try it. If it's not, just put your hands on the floor. Take it the other way. Those toes are gonna to lift up. The opposite toes lift up. And your front toes might be turned out a bit. One more time on each side, take it the other way. Some of you with really healthy knees can probably just keep your hands at the heart the whole time. I don't have healthy knees. So I walk my hands over to the other side. Stay here, a couple more breaths. And then we're gonna find a lunge toward the front of your mat. So bring those hands down, turn your left toes forward. You're in your lunge. We're gonna step your right leg up, standing split, just kind of as a pass through pose. And then right foot next to left, and we'll come to standing at the top of your mat. Inhale the arms up. Sit down, chair pose. Hands come to your heart. Take that prayer twist, right elbow to the outside of the knee. Left palm presses into the right. Belly button draws in. And now do that little check, system check. If your right knee is in front of your left, draw the right hip back so they're in line with each other. Your toes should be in line with each other. Pressing the palms down toward the floor. We're gonna put the weight in your left foot and see if you can kind of lift that right foot and float that leg back. You can get a little hang time, go for it. And then we're in that crescent twist. There's always the option to drop your knee. So if you are struggling right now, ask yourself, why am I struggling? I don't need to struggle. Drop your knee. You're still getting an incredible twist with that knee down. So honor your body. Two more breaths right here. Can you send the crown of your head forward more? and reach back through the right heel a little more. One more breath. We're gonna release your hands to the floor. Left leg, send it up and back. Bend your knee, stack your hip, or flip the dog if you wanna flip your dog. Come on back over, down dog, child's pose. Whatever you like, you can 
come to seated, take a few breaths. So we're gonna end up going through that one more time on each side a little more fluidly. And I'm gonna throw in um, a couple other variations that you can choose to take or leave, up to you. Let's meet back in down dog. Take a big inhale through your nose. Open mouth sigh, let something go. Reach your right leg up to the sky. Bring that knee towards your nose, plant your foot, drop your left knee, inhale, crescent B. Exhale, lift the knee, sweep back. One more time, just like that with your breath. Don't rush it. Keep the knee lifted. On your inhale, rise, crescent pose. Take a twist, right arm back, left arm forward. Look forward, right hand to your back thigh, exalted warrior, reach up and back. Reach your right arm up to meet your left. Warrior three, when you're ready, focus your eyes on something that isn't moving and just lift up warrior three. So this time we're gonna go somewhere different. We're gonna come to standing on your right foot. I'm gonna have you take your left hand to the inside of your left foot. We're gonna set up for dancer pose. So dancer pose, your left hand grabs the inside of the foot to draw that leg down. You don't want your leg open like this. Then you want your right arm up. And the trick to this pose is equal energy, reaching forward and kicking into your hand. Reach and kick and reach and kick. You can do this in front of a wall and the wall will catch you when you fall. If you fall, just press off the wall and reach back up. So two more breaths here and we're gonna go into half moon from here. One more breath. Your right hand can float or go to your block as you open into your half moon pose. One more breath here and then big step back, warrior two. Nice bend in that knee, check your alignment as you land. Make adjustments as you need to. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, side angle pose. Just gonna flow through it this time. As you begin to inhale through the nose, reverse your warrior. As you begin to exhale, settle in. Now I'm gonna bring my strap with me and show you guys the bind with the strap because we're gonna be here for a bit. So I'm gonna switch positions here. So if you have a wrap, your left hand goes behind and you can take your right arm in front and bind and pull back. If that doesn't sound like easy for you, put the strap in your left hand and let it just fall behind your butt. Your right arm's in front, it's gonna go underneath and you're gonna clasp what you can. And then from there you pull back and this is your bind. Okay, so you, we all start somewhere. We probably all started with a strap. It took me forever to not need the strap. So just again, settle into your body, be kind to it and use your strap if you need it. Now you can stay right here. This gets tough. I'm gonna tell you to just stay here. If you wanna try Bird of Paradise, you can do it with the strap. Just keep your hands, don't change them. Look down, you're gonna step your left foot forward. You might need a couple little hops. Again, you can ignore this, okay? Or you can watch and then try it. Shift the weight into your left foot. So I like to bend my left knee and come up onto the ball of my right foot. And then I point my right toe as I come to standing. And then when I feel balanced, maybe I flex my foot, maybe. Keep rolling the shoulder open. Now you can try this with the strap or with the bind, or you can stay where you are. So you can come out of your bird of paradise when you're ready, try to go slow with control. We're gonna meet back with everybody else in that bind. Those of you that have been staying here, I warned you, it's hard to stay here. We're gonna open the arm, it should feel so good. And then come on up, straighten your leg right away. Reverse your triangle, oh, feels good. And then come on up, shorten your stance if you like and find your triangle pose. We're gonna skip our Sandhasana as a side and come on back to warrior two, sink into your knee windmill your hands down, standing split, that left leg goes up, big inhale, and then just left foot next to right, setting your feet up for chair pose, bend your knees, reach your arms up. So I'm gonna go this way. We're gonna take a uh, chair twist. I'm gonna show you side crow if you wanna try it. So you can stay right here and ignore me, okay? If you want side crow, 
your hands come to the outside of your mat and they must be in line with each other. If you've got one forward and one back, it's gonna be very tricky. So you bend your elbows like chaturanga and your triceps become your shelf for your right knee and your right hip. And you can keep those legs together or you can open them up and look like a really, really cool hip hop star, right? <laughs> So you can pick your choices here. We're gonna end up meeting in that crescent twist. So the right foot stays down, that left leg is gonna go back. And we find that nice prayer twist. You can drop the knee. You can take a bind here if you want. Again, I'm gonna turn around. The bind, this left arm goes, I have to shove mine underneath. I've got really short arms. And then the right arm goes behind to bind. And then you can lift the knee if you want. You can do this with the strap just like we did the eagle wrap, I mean the wrap with our bird of paradise. Wrong bird. <laughs> There's a lot of bird poses in yoga. Have you guys ever thought about that? It's weird. Crow, pigeon, all these birds I don't even like. Bird of paradise is pretty. <laughs> all right, release your hands down. Although bird of paradise is a flower. Hello, reach your right leg up, shake it out, flip your dog if you like. And then we're taking it down. Left leg up, bring your knee forward, step it through, drop your right knee, crescent B, inhale, rise. Exhale, sweep back, lift the knee. One more time. Keep your knee lifted. Rise up, crescent pose. As you exhale, take that twist. Left arm back, right arm forward. Inhale, exalted warrior. As you exhale, sweep that left arm up and pause. Take an inhale here. Warrior three, lift up. We're gonna come to standing on your left foot. Bring that right leg up, dancer pose. Right hand on the inside of your right foot. Draw that knee down, hips. Hips should be facing the front of your yoga mat. Left arm up and then kick and reach with equal energy. I'd recommend keeping your left knee a little bend in it. We're gonna come into half moon pose. Your left hand can float or go on the block as you open into half moon pose. Ardha Chandrasana. One more breath here. Step on back into warrior two. Big step back, check your foot alignment. Sink into the knee, make sure your left toes are facing forward. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, side angle pose. One more time just like that and then we'll settle in. So stay here. If you wanna take the bind with a strap, give it in your right hand here and let it just fall behind your back. Okay, so it should dangle down. And then this left arm goes underneath and grabs it. And then from there, you pull open. So give yourself enough strap so that you're, you don't look like this. This is not how you wanna look in this bind. You wanna be open, okay? And you can keep this for your bird of paradise if you wanna try it. If you wanna go into bird of paradise, shift the weight into the left foot and step your right foot forward. Then you shift the weight to the right foot. So you switch it up, bend your right knee, point your left toes as you come up. And then extend the leg. I like to flex the foot as I do that. Your right shoulder rolls open. Your gaze is on something that isn't moving. We're gonna come out of this slowly, meeting up with everyone else's whose legs are probably burning like crazy right now. Unwrap your arms, big expansion. Find warrior two, right into reverse triangle, straighten the leg, reach up and back. And then come on up, reach forward, left hand down, right arm up. Do whatever you like with your arms. Yogi's choice here. Inhale back to warrior two. You're gonna bring your hands down to the mat. Right leg up to the sky, standing split into standing 
upright in mountain pose. Oops, lost my balance. Inhale the arms up and find chair pose. Hands to your heart. We're gonna take that prayer twist. So now you're feeling like, huh, maybe I will try that side crow. It's seriously so easy. It looks hard, it's not hard. You bring your, I come onto the balls of my feet. Again, I've got short limbs, legs and arms. So if you're like me, come down. Hands are parallel. And then just bend and like tip over literally like a teapot. Just tip and eventually your feet lift. And it's like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Allie's right, it's pretty easy. You don't have to extend legs, but you can try. That's a little harder. We're gonna meet back in that chair twist. So if you've been staying there, you're very strong. Weight in your left foot, that right leg's gonna go back. Slide it way, way back. Find your prayer twist here. And if you wanna take the bind, I have to drop my knee to shove my arm under, but you put this right arm underneath and then the left arm goes behind and just clasps. So those of you with longer arms, you might be able to just put that arm right underneath. Not my story, <laughs> I can't do that. Crown of the head reaches forward, right heel reaches back, your belly button, suck it in and then find more length. Two more breaths, that's it. We're almost done with this. Release your hands to the floor. Ha, ah, send that left leg up. Do whatever you like to release it. Stack your hip, shake it out, flip your dog. We're gonna meet in child's pose. Feel free to take a vinyasa if you want it or just come right into it. Big toes together. Please take your knees wide toward the edges of your mat and then send your hips back. Couple of deep breaths here. Take your hands that are extended forward, bring them to the nape of your neck. So like a reverse namaste at the nape of your neck. Two more deep breaths here. And then release your hands. We're gonna come back to down dog just as a pass through pose, I promise. We're gonna be doing pigeon pose. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna set you guys up for pigeon. Those of you with knee issues, I'm gonna give you other options afterward. So your right shin is gonna come forward. You're gonna nudge your left foot back a little bit, like use the balls of your left foot to, to take your leg back. Now, if you automatically draw this foot back towards your left, left hip, see if you have more room. You might have more room in your hips that you can, ideally you want this shin parallel to the front, but that may take years to do. So there's no rush, got plenty of time. You come upright. If you find you are falling to the right, please grab a block or a blanket and pillow, shove it under your right cheek and then find your pigeon. If you've got knee issues and you're saying, no, no, thank you, Allie, not doing this. You can either take pigeon on your back, just like this, or you can come into a figure four and take it here, which you can also do against the wall. You can press your left foot into a wall. Okay, so pick your pleasure here. One more. So I was taking a yoga class the other day and the teacher used such a great analogy for the hips. She equated it, well, it's a great analogy for maybe Nicole, I mean, Kim, Nicole's not on, Kim is, because she might have a basement, <laughs> but she used the analogy of a basement, that your hips are like a basement and you just kind of store stuff down there that you don't need and you just keep throwing it down there and you keep throwing it down there and eventually it just gets heavy and full, like that basement that you'd like to be used as a family room and you can't because there's so much crap down there. So use this opportunity to kind of empty out that basement. Maria Kondo it, get rid of the stuff that doesn't bring you joy, right? Two more breaths here. So if you're with me in pigeon, you're gonna walk your hands up. You're gonna tuck your left toes under and take the right leg up and just shake it out. If you're on your back, shake it out and release it and then take your hip opener on the other side. So those of you that are doing pigeon on the left side, when you're ready, take your time, okay? Don't rush, don't like come forward and just plop into it. Set yourself up. 
Your right leg should be straight back. I forgot to mention that on the last time. Your hip should feel even. If you are doing what I'm doing right here, that means you need something under this cheek, okay? And see if you can bring that shin forward a little bit and then you'll come forward. If you come here and you're like, oh, this hurts my left knee, pigeon is not for you. Then you take it on your back and there's no pressure on your knee, okay? There's, trust me, don't hurt your knee and need knee surgery. It's not fun. So just stay here if your knee is okay with it. If your hip is going like, ooh, that's okay. Not to that you really don't need. So those of you listening to my playlist, I'm skipping forward to somewhere over the rainbow because I love that song. Couple more breaths here. And you're gonna slowly begin to walk your hands up. Tuck your right toes under. Again, if you're on your backs, you can just stay there. We're gonna meet up with you in just a moment. Shake your leg out. So we're gonna end up meeting seated. So if you're on your back doing your hip openers, come on up to seated for me. We're gonna take your legs out in front of you. So straight out in front of you. You're gonna grab your left thigh and roll it in and do the same thing with your right. We do that to root our sitting bones down. So if you rock from side to side, you should feel those bones in your butt. That's what I'm referring to with your sits bones. Speaking of sits, let's sit up nice and tall. Flex your toes toward you. As you do that, you should feel your quadriceps engage and your knees kind of lift up. Keep that. From there, inhale, reach up. You might want your strap. We're gonna reach for our feet. So if that doesn't sound possible for you, it is. You just wrap your feet with a strap. You wrap the hands or the strap one time around each hand and you come forward. But guess what? Your toes are still flexed, okay? And we do that to keep our muscles active. And we do that so that you don't pull a muscle. So with each inhale, can you lengthen your spine a little more? And then as you exhale, pull your heart forward as opposed to this rounding down. If you all had your screens on right now, I should see your smiling faces facing me right now. So pretend I'm seeing the screen and just smile. And then as you exhale, pull forward a little bit more. Keep your thighs active. Keep the backs of your legs pressing into the floor. One more breath. And then slowly come on up. So your legs are extended, yeah? We're gonna take your hands behind you. I want your fingers facing your back. So if you wanna watch for a moment, we're gonna take reverse plank. It is a back bend. I'm gonna tell you a couple options. So you can lift your hips up right here and this is your reverse plank. More advanced would be trying to touch your toes to the floor. So you really have to lift your hips up to do that. If either of those don't sound right for you, you're gonna walk your feet in and take a reverse tabletop. So one of those should work for you unless you have a shoulder issue that this is bothering you. So think about tucking the tailbone under and lifting your hips. Two more breaths right here, gaze straight up at the ceiling and then slowly lower. So nice. You're gonna come forward on your mat just a little bit. If you've got one of these guys, you're gonna place it next to you as you lower down. Kim, I'm thinking about your pink ones. I want pink, I like that. <laughs> Release your feet to the floor. Walk your feet in towards you. We're gonna set up for bridge pose. Lift those hips, draw the thighs like you're squeezing a block or a tennis ball between your thighs. Maybe you bend your elbows and press down. You'll notice when you press down, your hips magically have more space to lift. Or maybe you walk your, or lace your fingers, tuck your shoulder blades underneath and press down in those lace fingers and your feet, of course. You can play with lifting one leg up at a time. If you've never tried that, why not try now? You might like it. 
So let's take two more breaths here in this nice back bend. Press more into your feet. If your fingers are laced underneath you, please walk them back out. And then we're all gonna lower the spine down to the mat. And then from there, draw your knees into your chest. Look just like we did at the beginning of class. Take your knees wide. This time you're gonna rock from side to side like that. <clears throat> Should feel good. And then we're gonna release your feet back down like you're setting up for bridge. If you have a block, grab it either this height, the middle height or the low height. And you're gonna place it underneath your hips. So you're fully supported on your block and you're gonna take your legs up. If you do not have a block, no fret, you're gonna come right here, okay? So we all have this nice L shape. Some of us have our hips lifted a little bit more. If you wanna come into full shoulder stand and can do so safely, do so at your own risk. This is just as wonderful and beneficial without the risk to your neck. So this is the one I like to teach. Because realistically, if you do full shoulder stand, you are supposed to have a blanket under each shoulder blade. So you would need two blankets. Just takes a long time to set up to support your neck. And then you can more safely get into the pose. One more breath here. We're gonna bring your feet down to the floor. From there, if you've got the block underneath, lift your hips, remove the block, and just slowly come on down. Find a happy baby. We've done lots of hip openers, so this should feel pretty good right now. Grab the outer edges of your feet, bend the knees, and just gently rock from side to side with the option to straighten one or both legs, your choice. And then bring your thighs together. We're gonna hug your right knee in. So lace your fingers around the right knee, extend your left leg long. Give that knee a squeeze and then guide it across your body for a twist. Try to keep that right shoulder glued to the mat. One more deep inhale and exhale. On your next inhale, come on back to your spine. Give it a squeeze that, of that knee and then switch it up. Hug that left knee in, extend the right leg long. And then with the right hand, guide the knee across your body. Look over your left shoulder. A couple of deep breaths here. Make your way onto your spine. You're gonna draw both of your knees into your chest. If you are using my playlist, you may wanna switch it to the very last song. Wrap your arms around your shins, lift your nose up towards your knees. Take a big inhale here. And as you exhale, you're gonna release it into Shavasana, letting your legs be super wide, maybe even off of your mat and onto the floor, allowing your feet to just flop open. And I am going to do something a little different today for our Shavasana. I'm going to read you a guided meditation from Deepak Chopra. That's all about gratitude. So if you don't want to hear it, you can simply turn the sound off from our class and just listen to the music. So I'm going to bring awareness to things in your life that you are thankful for. Just give gratitude the chance to come up naturally. And when it comes up, just let yourself sink into the feeling and surrender to it. Notice how it feels in your body, how your energy feels. And if it doesn't come up, that's okay. You don't need to try to make yourself feel gratitude. Just surrender to your heart and not your head. So let's flash through all aspects of your life that you might be grateful for. First, bring your awareness to your breath. As you inhale and as you exhale, and be aware of your heart beating, pulsing, 
love and compassion and peace and flowing that back out. Bring your awareness to your eyes to let you see color, faces, smiles, nature, the sunrise and sunset, the rainbow, the moon and the stars and yourself in the mirror. Bring your awareness to your ears that beam in sound, music, laughter, the voices of those you love, the silence, the beautiful sounds of life. Bring your awareness to your nose that smells the ocean breeze, the aroma of candles, the flower, the trees, newly cut grass, the wafting smells that come from the kitchen, cupcakes in the oven. Bring your awareness to your lips and mouth that tastes and savors and nourishes, kisses and speaks, that whispers and sings. Bring your awareness to your hands that hold and touch and caress and open and close and applaud and squeeze the arms and shoulders that carry and hug and lift and stretch. Our feet, our toes, the gift to wiggle them, transport you, walk, run, dance, kick, fold, leap and point. What about your tears, your sorrows and the strength that you seem to be able to muster to make it through each day? Bring your awareness to your abundance, your expansion, your evolution, your perspective shifts, the affluence and flow and empathy and love and light and your ability to see growth and potential in every moment. Now just breathe and feel more grace and ease. And now experience the warmth, love and compassion that gratitude brings into your heart. Drift your awareness to nurturing relationships in your life, the new ones and the old ones, material things that came to you unexpectedly, things that flow to you with great effort and commitment and hard work. Think of love in your life and your connection to those things that are sweet and loving and honorable and just feel right. When we no longer take life for granted, we become grateful for everything that we have. Just breathe and feel the flow. Slowly begin to bring some awareness back to the body. Wiggling your fingers and wiggling your toes. And on your next inhale, just reach your arms over your head onto the floor for one final stretch from the fingertips all the way to the toes. Take a big inhale there. And as you exhale, draw your knees into your chest, gently rocking from side to side. Let your knees just fall carefully to the right as you make your way up to a comfortable seated position whenever you're ready. Take your time. And when you get there, just relax your shoulders down your back and let's bring the hands together at the heart center, sitting up nice and tall. Just take a moment again and acknowledge those things in your life you're grateful for. Maybe some other things come to mind. I'm going to end our class with the same quote we started with. When you stop chasing the wrong things, you give the right things a chance to catch you. And together, let's take a big inhale through your nose. Just fill up with breath. Open mouth, sigh, and just let something go. 
do that one more time. Long, slow, full inhale. And then an even deeper exhale. And just come back to your natural rhythm of your breath. I wanna thank you also very much for joining me this morning so we can share in this magical practice of yoga. May the sun always shine through your heart into your smile and warm your soul. Namaste. Thanks, Allie.